Hi, and welcome to At The Movies with Adam Ross. In today's episode, I'll be reviewing Elysium, one of my most anticipated films of the entire year. Now, I'm here to report that Elysium is a slight disappointment, and the reason why is the film's own fault, because this film is so good in places that when it isn't good, it stands out so badly. And Elysium is really ambitious. It's the new work by director Neil Bloomkamp, a young guy, he's only 33 years old, and his first film came out a couple of years ago called District 9, which blew away everyone. And that was a really great movie with cool special effects, a likable protagonist, and a great social message. And he's tried to repeat the formula again for this movie, Elysium, but just on a bigger canvas. This time he's got Matt Damon in the lead role playing Max, a guy who lives down on a ravaged earth. And when you make it on earth, you can get a ticket and you can go up to Elysium and live where everyone's beautiful, everyone is healthy, and they've even got machines that can eradicate things like cancer. Max his dream is sped up when he's involved in a workplace accident and finds out he's only got five days to live. So with that ticking clock, Max endeavors to get his way up to Elysium. Now, this movie has got a really good, you know, amazing trailers and really eye-popping visuals, and the visuals continue in the film. This is amazingly shot. The design elements are so cool, and Neil Bloomkamp is a really original voice in science fiction filmmaking. Where this movie falls flat, though, is in some of the character development. It's hard to care for some of these characters, including Max himself. You know, he still does selfless actions, but his motivation really isn't there, and I think that if there was another polish of this script just to clear up the motivations of some of the characters. Some of the switcheroos that happen in this film are a little bit confusing. The other characters are a mixed bag in this. Shelto Copley is awesome in this movie. He is completely badass. He's playing a South African mercenary that is on Max's trail and he has a samurai sword and an exo suit that he uses to beat people up with. And you've got Jodie Foster as well who is um, playing one of the leaders of Elysium and her performance is really miscalculated and her accent is kind of weird and jars and it's a mixture of American and British. And I think she knows she's in a big landish, um, outlandish science fiction film and she's going for it but it kind of it's miscalculated and it grates a little bit on the ears uh, the rest of the film yeah is is a bit of a mixed bag when the action kicks off in this movie it is so cool and it rocks so hard and if you remember the you know a card carrying member of the video game generation you will dig this movie there are people getting bullets stuck in them them getting detonated and exploding there is exo suit fights with um samurai swords involved and things like that. So really cool stuff that harks back to the films of James Cameron and George Miller that did Mad Max. But um, when the emotional beats of this story happen, they kind of leave you a little bit cold. Uh, it holds your hand a lot, this film. It, it goes back to flashbacks and childhood memories and really spells out what you should be feeling at every given moment. And it's a bit of a shame because the other movie had a lot more edge, District 9. And so some of those edges being softened in this movie and the message coming more to the forefront of this one are some of its weaknesses. But look, if you're into science fiction filmmaking, you have to check this one out just for its eye melting visuals I mean the movie looks so cool and the special effects are so spot on and he's still like District 9 he a lot of the shots have got almost like a handheld immediacy to them some people that don't like shaky cam might be turned off by the action but I dig it because I think that what you're dealing with is a lo-fi shooting style with unbelievable special effects and I think that melding gives movies a real realism so Neil Bloomkamp is definitely a director to watch and if he keeps making movies like this he's going to give us a handful of classics by the time he's finished so Check it out, but just don't expect the next District 9. I give this one four stars just for its great world building, but I wish it just reached out and grabbed that greatness that was in, in its grasp.